Recently, I asked you if you managed to pull Kave, and if you did, if you use him, benched him, or don't know how to play him. About 50% of y'all don't have him, and out of all the responses, only 6% actually use him. The version 3.8 Spiral Abyss usage numbers reflect something similar as well, where Kave's usage falls between Dia and Yunjin at 1.1%. So what are some teams we can build with Kave, and why doesn't anyone use him? But before team building, we need to cover his kit. What does Kave offer that no one else does? Dendro Core Explosion buffs and Manual Detonation. His burst infuses his Claymore with Dendro and buffs Dendro Core damage according to its talent level. Additionally, both his burst and skill set off all Dendro Cores within a certain radius. On top of that, his passives help clarify the niche that he fills. Kave's Ascension 1 passive heals him for 300% his elemental mastery whenever he's hit by Dendro Core explosions, which assists him in his pursuit of being the team's on-field DPS. Additionally, his A4 passive allows him to gain elemental mastery stacks after his burst from normal charged or plunging attacks. Each stack raises his personal EM by 25 with a limit of 4 stacks, totaling a maximum of 100 EM. These stacks expire when his burst ends. This is what his team rotations look like, in the most generic terms. Someone creates Dendro Cores, then Kave swaps on field and detonates them. But there are differences between rotations when he has his burst charge and when he doesn't. When his burst is available, it's imperative to have off-field Hydro application up and creating cores, then activate those cores with Kave's burst. From there, his Dendro Infusion will create more cores with that off-field character, allowing him to detonate those with his skill. If his burst is not charged, Kave swaps back onto the field whenever there are Dendro cores, and activates them with his skill on cooldown. This cycle continues until his burst is back up. Now that we know his rotations, let's talk about team composition. Obviously, we'll want a Hydro and second Dendro character to generate cores for him, but that's only three slots filled. You might think that an Anima support would be helpful for grouping in Hydro Swirl, but if you add one, you'll notice a lack of Dendro application. So this last spot would best be filled by another Dendro character. Finally, we're on to what Kave teams specifically look like. Here we'll discuss two teams that can work for new or generally free-to-play players, and one that's for players that have some specific 5 stars. For the most free-to-play friendly team on this list, we start with Kave, with Favonius Greatsword, two-piece gilded for elemental mastery, those being his flower and feather with EM sands, goblet, and circlet to pump in as much elemental mastery as we can get for him. Next up is Dendro MC with Favonius sword and four-piece deepwood, then Kali with Favonius bow and four-piece emblem, and Barbara with prototype amber and two-piece tenacity built for HP percent. Some disclaimers here, I use Favonius weapons for energy recharge, but any other weapon that has ER can substitute. For all Fav weapons, I have them both at R1 and R5, but the R1 weapons are not leveled. So what you've been watching in the background is all R5. So now let's take a look at R1 level 1 weapons. The benefit of looking at low damage, low refinement is that we can get a close up of how this team handles energy generation and rotations that we covered earlier. Additionally, every character has constellations activated, three for Kave and six for the rest of the team, which does buff energy recharge and element mastery for the team and ends up boosting the damage numbers. So make sure you take that into consideration when building this team for yourself. The next team here is just a minor change, but it does take it a little bit less free to play friendly, replacing Barbara for Xing Cho. Now for this, his sacrificial sword is R5 as well, and he's wearing the four piece emblem set. Like before, Xingqiu does have six constellations active, which raise his personal damage output, but it doesn't really affect Kave that much at all. Happy to apply. Sight clear. Rain cutter, blow my sword. Spring forth. Watch 
For the final team, there's no attempt to make this free-to-play friendly. I just didn't put expensive weapons on these characters. Kave has the same build as before, but next up we have Nahida with R5 Sacrificial Fragments and 4-piece Deepwood, Baiju with Prototype Amber and 4-piece Tenacity, and Yulan with an R5 Favonius Bow and 4-piece Emblem. For this team, the only character with constellations active, apart from Kave, is Nahida with C2, meaning that now enemies have lower defense. Additionally, my testing showed that the crit chance from Nahida C2 does also apply to Kave's detonated cores as well. Again, please take this into consideration when building out this team for yourself. The individual units of this team are good enough that previous open world testing just won't cut it. As you can see, Hilly Trolls are immediately evaporated as soon as Kave activates his skill. So how about a tougher mob, like the Pyro Registine? As you can tell, since I'm still optimizing the burst rotation, it takes a little longer than one Regisfine cycle. But for an underleveled Kave, just getting him to level 80 out of 90 would solve that issue, since Bloom Reactions scale off level as well as Elemental Mastery. You might have noticed that I didn't include Nilo on any of these teams. If I had, the rotations would have been completely screwy, since the Bountiful cores from Nilu would detonate themselves in around 1 second instead of 6 seconds for the normal cores, invalidating Kaveh's usefulness. So now let's talk about why people don't play Kave teams. You can see that the free-to-play teams performed exceptionally well without Days of Artifact farming, while nearly every character was underleveled for World Level 8. With a team that handles general combat so well, there have to be some strong reasons why you shouldn't run it. From what I can tell, there are three distinct obstacles. One, Kave isn't flexible in his team build and can only run one specific team comp which doesn't have any flex spots, or the flexibility of more traditional teams where most characters can be swapped for somebody else in a pinch. Number two, one of the key characters in the free-to-play side is Dendro MC, who's much more valuable in Hyperbloom comps, especially for new, young, and free-to-play accounts. And number three, in the early game where this team is most viable, chances are players won't have the EM artifacts they need because they have a lower chance to drop than all their artifacts like attack, and they won't be able to stack enough element mastery to make this team feel comfortable. So as you can see, Kave is absolutely a viable unit to use if you're willing to put some of your most valuable and flexible characters into this comp, but he's a little too niche for him to be a popular pick. Huge thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate a little click of the sub button and feed the YouTube algorithm with a like and a comment letting me know if Kave will be a character that you want to try now. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.